Hi, I'm Petri, Product Manager for MWater, and in this video I will be wearing my Product Manager hat firmly on as we look back at MWater's top 10 new features of this very tumultuous year that has been 2020. Now, this top 10 is not necessarily in order of betterness of features, just my own ordering. Let's get started and see what we've got. Let's start with the app, with number 10, account management in the app. So now, there's a new page in the app that allows you to manage your account information and even reset your password and set it through your app. So you need to go to the settings tab and then pick my account from the top to see this. It's very useful uh, for enumerators who don't interact much with the portal and want to be able to manage their account details and update them right there in the app. So check it out. Number nine, in the app again, onboarding custom configs. So now there's a prompt on the app homepage when a user is invited to join a custom version of the app, as you can see here. Now, if you're asking yourself, well, what is a custom version of the app or a custom config, as we call it, you can learn more about these in our resource center. But in a nutshell, they allow you to adjust the branding of the app as well as the permissions and the workflow, by which I mean which issues, which sites, and which surveys are available at which point. So you can customize the app homepage, show a particular set of surveys, hide all the rest. You can choose which site types to show, which properties and in which order to show them, as well as have custom issues, meaning tickets, that you have in the app as well. For example, if a water pipe bursts or a water point breaks down, anything like that. And now with the new feature, it's also much easier to make sure that your enumerators actually see when they've been invited to such a custom config and get onboarded properly. If you want to learn more, go check it out from the resource center or talk to us about custom configs at info at mwater.co. That's number nine. And speaking of the Resource Center, one of the big hits this year for Mwater has been our Resource Center, our guides, as well as our YouTube channel. So we've added over a dozen new guides to the Resource Center this year, which already has a big bunch of guidance material intended to allow you to learn about lots of elements of the platform uh, independently. And we've made a big push this year as well on our YouTube channel with a whopping 48 new videos added, um, which is available at youtube.com slash mwaterofficial. And the audience has been excited and, and broad. So we've got over 10,000 views, tons of new followers, and lots of new exciting content. So please uh, engage in some smashing of the subscribe button if you feel like it, and you will be kept up to date with our new features. So quite an exciting thing this year, especially if people are working from home and learning more and more uh, about the platform. Moving on from the app and the guides to the portal, a key update at the start of the year was our addition of cascading question types to surveys. So this is a new survey question type that allows you to guide enumerators down a narrowing path of choices to the correct one. For example, the user can first pick a region and then only see the districts that are actually part of that region. And then once they've picked the district, only see the zones or the villages that are part of that district. This is all up to you entering that data properly. Um, and this can apply for any structure. So for example, country program to program to project, any kind of geographical hierarchy you like, as we see in this GIF on the right side. And again, we have a comprehensive guide on exactly how to do this. And for this feature, making it available for everybody, all of our free users of mWater, uh, I want to give thanks to WaterAid who funded the development of it. At number six, we have a nice other great funded feature, namely the importing of custom shapefiles, which means you can bring your own map layers into the system and you can juxtapose those map layers with any of the data that you've collected in mWater 
and have geolocated. So that can be surveys with location fields, that can be sites with GPS locations, and you can then have multiple layers, of course, on your map. To do this, all you need to do is import your custom shapefile through this URL, tables, and then create a choropleth map or dashboard with a map widget. And yet again, we have a guide for this here in the resource center, just under if you look for custom shapefiles. Really, this should be able to handle rather complex shapefiles as we see here in the case of Malawi. And for this great new feature, uh, we should thank the Climate Justice Fund Water Futures Program from Scotland, stewarded here by uh, Strathclyde University, who funded this feature to become available for everybody. So thank you very much. Hopefully everybody can make great use of this cool feature. Carrying on with map improvements, we've got number five halfway through our list. So, mWater is not only intended for you to map individual water points or communities or schools, you can also map any number of water systems, any number of water system components, such as pumps, generators, storage tanks, as well as the taps that people use to get the water out, as well as individual pipe segments. Here you see one of our examples with lots and lots, in fact thousands of such components all handled by our standard free system. So check that out if you haven't done so before. And this year we've iterated on the features and the functionality in lots of ways, but two ways I'd like to highlight here is that now in the app you can overlay satellite background layers thereby seeing more accurately where you are uh, in the world, are you actually close to the tap, uh, the water installation, as well as get to a closer zoom level, in fact three zoom levels closer on the app so that those individual system components are better visible in the app and the portal because those are often very close to each other in the real world as well as we can even see from this image. So do check out our water system features, you can go to the resource center and learn more, you can go to the manage tab at the top and check for uh, water systems. Okay, so we've got maps. Well, what do you actually want to show on maps? Well, survey information is something, but I also want to draw your attention to our top 10 number four, the improved indicator library. So this is our global indicator library, which is accessible from the top bar and gives you access to our list of expert devised indicators. What do we mean by that? Well, in the mWater context, this means uh, things that you can use to compare similar things across many surveys or many organizations. So that could be water quality by E. coli, water point functionality, um, and even WASH uh, SDG service levels for 6.1 and, and others. So really they're just the general term for having a structured set of questions that you can bring into your surveys and make sure you're tracking, asking the same questions, tracking the same data first and foremost, and that can then make it comparable. We've got a lot of uh, material on indicators, including a nice guide video. And another thing to mention about indicators that's I think really exciting from the product generation point of view is that they can save you a lot of effort by allowing you to automatically calculate higher level insights from survey questions. So the example I like is that you can get an SDG service level determination that the system calculates for you as long as you enter the survey questions in there. So you enter something about water quality, about the location, about the type of water source, and the system will give you the service level for that uh, row of data by calculating it through a pre-established set of logic that's visible for you to see. So you understand how it works, but it also does that for you. So go check it out, our indicator library from the top tab. Moving on to number three, coordinate compatibility for UTM coordinates. So our standard coordinate format is always latitude and longitude. However, now, thanks to funding from the Ugandan Water Project, the system can also take in and export coordinate information in UTM format, as you can see here. This is probably relevant for certain given contexts only, but hopefully very, very valuable for those contexts. So do check it out. 
And then on to the exciting two finalists here on our top 10. We've got the feature to embed your own visualizations on your own websites. So this is a great major new feature that allows you to go to a dashboard or a map or a console that you've created, generate some code and then put that code on your own website. And then all the stuff you've built in Mwater you can show to stakeholders on your own website. So you can have a little dashboard that shows your key work to donors, you can bring it on to your city utility management page, your government MIS page, your NGO page, you name it. And it's very simple to do as well as the GIF is showing you. All you need to do is go to your existing visualization, create a share link, and then click that little link that says embed. That will generate the HTML code that's required to embed the visualization. And once you place that code in the right place on your own website page, you will see a little window into this dashboard embedded right there. So this has been generously funded by the Ugandan Water Project and the Water Project and is available to all of our users. You can read more about this here in this URL and of course find guidance in our resource center. And then number one, our latest and certainly possibly greatest feature Certainly I can imagine a lot of use for this mobile friendly dashboard layouts are now out and available. This means that you can make your dashboards mobile responsive so they appear well on smaller screens such as smaller laptops and mobile devices. We've made a set of improvements to dashboards. This is the cool one you can play around with for sure. You just select layout from the top options on the dashboard. You get a new page where you get to see and test and set some limits and thresholds uh, and understand and develop how the layouts work on various screen sizes all the way down to, to smartphones. So this can be very, very useful if you have managers who want to actually consume the data that you're collecting and are primarily working off tablets or smartphones. Please go check it out. This has been funded by the Watson work we've got going on in Haiti. Amazing really exciting stuff and we're absolutely open to feedback on, on this and, and all of the other top 10 we've shown so far. Now we're of course always working on more stuff here at MWater and working on making those available to all of our more than 100,000 users across MWater, Solstice and other supported platforms. I'm just picking out a couple of things here at the end to highlight to you for the future what to look forward to. We've been talking about this first one for a while, a utility package. In short, this is intended to be a self-standing package where you combine asset management of water systems together with meter readings, together with basic accounting systems that allow a utility to digitize its asset management, billing, meter reading, everything in one go. Another thing we've been working on is an online training center that structures courses on learning basics about MWater, such as how to use the app and how to use the portal more uh, in depth, which you can do and then get certificates generated for you. So enumerators can independently or with some of your own guidance go through this training center and be certified once they pass a certain amount of quizzes. And a third domain where we see a lot of activity over here at MWater is our work on custom management information systems with partners uh, all over the world. So that's certainly an area that is growing for us and we're working on a lot. If that's of interest to your organization, and I mean having a separate website of your own that makes use of lots and lots of uh, MWater's monitoring and evaluation features, data mapping and so on, please get in touch and we can work something out. And on top of this all, a ton of new features coming out next year as well. So please do stay tuned. And to do that, you can connect with us here over Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, of course, YouTube, where this video will be. In the video comments, I'll put links to all of the guides, as well as a bit of a textual explanation of all these features. And Otherwise, wish you a really nice end to the year and a great future. Thanks very much for watching.
Bye.